If you saw our recent video where John gave you a tour of our technology cabinet, you may have noticed one glaring omission. Cellular boosting. We're going to correct that today by installing a Drive 4GX. Now besides this base unit, the system comes with a small roof mounted antenna. This is a 4 inch stubby antenna with a magnet mount on it. Now we've decided that because we spend so much time in remote areas, we would upgrade to WeBoost's over the road trucker antenna instead. Now there are two versions of this antenna. This is the shorter of the two versions, so it won't stick up as high off the roof, and it also has a spring on it. And the fact that it's shorter and has this spring will provide us with some extra safety driving in forested areas if we were to go underneath a low-hanging tree branch. Both of the trucker antennas are primarily designed to be mounted on the side view mirror of a truck using this included three-way bracket. You can also use the bracket to attach it to your ladder on the back of your RV. But we're opting not to do that for two reasons. One is, our motorhome is 43 feet long and our tech cabinet is all the way up here in the very front. So that would mean a very long run of cable to get to the antenna if we were to put it all the way on the ladder. And the other reason is because we'd rather not have something sticking up right next to the ladder because we climb up and down on the roof so often we think this might impede safe access to the roof. So we've decided to flat mount this to the roof. We've come up with what we think is a kind of a clever, inexpensive, and easy way to flat mount this. And when we go up there, we'll show you how we're going to do that. The last piece of the system is this internal antenna, commonly called a candy bar because of its shape and size. This is what rebroadcasts the signal from the booster into the RV to be picked up by your cellular enabled devices like a MiFi device or a cell phone. But there's an important thing to be noted about the distance that you mount this from any external antenna, whether it's the trucker mount or the magnet mount antenna. These have to be mounted a long distance away from each other to make sure you don't get something called oscillation. Oscillation is something like feedback in a speaker system. If you were to take a, the microphone and hold it too close to a speaker and get that loud squealing of feedback, what happens is if an external antenna and the internal antenna are too close together, they will oscillate basically shutting down the system and preventing you from getting cellular boosting. So when we're on the roof, you're gonna see that we're gonna mount the external antenna a good distance away from the internal antenna. WeBoost recommends at least eight feet between the two. We're going to extend the 14 foot cable all the way out to get the maximum distance between the two antennas. So let's go on the roof and show you exactly how we're going to install this. But keep in mind that your setup may be different based on a number of factors, including the location where you're going to mount your WeBoost and where you're going to mount your antenna. We'll be using the following tools and supplies. Mineral spirits, rubbing alcohol, paper towels, a Sharpie marker, a ruler, a hammer and punch, a rat tail file, a pair of scissors, a small roller, crescent and 7 8 inch wrenches, electrical tape, nitrile gloves, a cordless drill with a 3 8 inch bit, a putty knife, Phillips head screwdriver, wire cutters, industrial strength Velcro, an extra length of cable, self-adhesive cable tie mounts and some cable ties, a caulk gun, and a tube of Dicor self-leveling lap sealant. This may seem like a lot of tools, but about half of them are only needed for the flat mount bracket we've created. You'll see when we do the installation that if you're using the magnet mount antenna, you won't need everything shown here. Speaking of our flat mount bracket, for that we've purchased a six inch square, one quarter inch thick aluminum plate, four one inch by one inch by two inch aluminum blocks, and a roll of 3M VHB, very high bond tape. If you're using the magnet mount antenna, you won't need any of this, but you will need a different type of metal plate, which John will tell you about when we're done with our installation. Also, if you have a rubber roof, as opposed to our fiberglass roof, you'll be attaching your antenna in a slightly different way. I'll explain the difference in a minute. After using mineral spirits to clean any excess oil and dirt off the aluminum plate and blocks, we measure the plate to find and mark the exact center. Then use our hammer and punch to form an impression in that center point. We set the plate up on the blocks, then drill a 3 8 inch hole using the punch mark as a guide. Protect your hands as needed. After the hole is drilled, 
Clean off any sharp edges using the rat tail file. Clean the bottom of the plate with rubbing alcohol and do the same to one side of each two inch block. Make sure the surfaces are clean and dry. Roll out and cut pieces of VHB tape and adhere them to the clean side of each block. 3M recommends applying pressure to activate the tape. We use the roller we keep around for use with Eternabon tape, but in a second, we'll show you how we figured out an alternate way to provide plenty of pressure without the roller. Now peel back the red plastic backing on the tape and place each block in one corner of the clean aluminum plate. Once they're all in place, here's how to apply plenty of pressure without a roller. Flip the plate over and stand on it. Of course, being as meticulous as we are, we protected the beautiful aluminum finish with a rag first. Here's where the steps are a little different for a rubber roof versus a fiberglass roof. If you have a rubber roof, you can't use VHB tape on it. You have to use screws. So you'll drill four holes, one through each block. With the mount we've made here, two inch screws would reach through the quarter inch plate and one inch blocks, leaving an additional three quarters of an inch to go down into the roof. Since we have a fiberglass roof, we can use VHB on it. So we'll clean the bottom of the four blocks with alcohol and adhere a piece of tape to each one. Insert the end of the antenna cable through the large included flat washer, then slide it all the way up the cable and onto the threads. Feed the cable through the top of the aluminum plate and pull it all the way through. Now insert the cable through the large nut and slide it all the way up to the plate. Coat the threads using the included packet of Loctite. Start the nut onto the threads and tighten it firmly. Our custom-made antenna mount is all ready to install on the roof of the RV. You can see that the one inch blocks plus the one quarter inch thick plate leave just enough room for the cable while keeping the height of the antenna as low as possible. As you may have seen in our video about installing our Wi-Fi Ranger, we have an access panel on our roof with a conduit leading directly into our tech cabinet. We'll remove the cover by cutting through the die core and removing the screws. If you don't have a conduit, you'll need to route your antenna cable another way. Refrigerator roof vents are a popular way to route cables. Use the putty knife to remove as much excess die core as possible. If you have a rubber roof, be careful to avoid damaging the material. Then clean off the remaining die core with mineral spirits. Again, if you have a rubber roof, be sure to avoid using too much. Soaking EPDM or TPO material with mineral spirits can damage it, so go easy. Clean all the die core off the access plate too. We keep an extra cable inside the conduit for this exact purpose, pulling new cables. We'll attach our spare to it, along with the end of the WeBoost antenna cable. Wrapping them with electrical tape keeps them together and protects them inside the conduit. Have a helper pull from inside as you feed the new cables into the opening. With our WeBoost antenna wire pulled through, tuck the end of the extra cable out of the way for future use. Now we can close up our roof access panel by applying a bed of die core all around the opening. Placing the plate back down, reinstalling the screws, and adding more die core over the sides of the plate and the screw heads. Now we'll pull the antenna cable to its full length, clean the mounting area with alcohol, peel the backing off the VHB tape, and press it into place. We'll stand on it again to ensure the tape is properly adhered. Again, if you have a rubber roof, you won't be using VHB tape here, but screwing into the roof instead. We'd suggest placing a strip of putty tape along the bottom of the aluminum blocks in place of the VHB. When you screw the assembly down, 
The putty tape will squish out the sides and you can scrape the excess away. You can also use die core for waterproofing. Finally, we're using self-adhesive cable tie mounts to keep the cable in place. Just clean with alcohol first, press them into place, then slide a zip tie through them and around the cable. If we want to move the antenna later, this technique is as easy to remove as Eternabond tape is permanent. Now that it's daylight again, we can see our installation, with the cable coming up through the roof, across the cable ties, and back to our antenna. There are many different ways that you can accomplish this, but we think our aluminum mount is beautiful. And the height of the antenna is perfect, clearing the air conditioners for maximum line of sight performance without being taller than necessary. Obviously, neither rain nor dark of night were going to keep us from getting our WeBoost installed. The only thing we needed to be cognizant of was making sure that the roof itself was dry when we applied the VHB tape and the die core. One way your installation may differ from ours is if you decide to use the 4-inch stubby magnet mount antenna instead. Obviously, this antenna won't stick to aluminum, but before you decide to just glue it to the roof using VHB tape or die core, there's another reason that this antenna needs metal and that's because it requires a ground plane to reflect the cell signal up onto the antenna in order to optimize its performance. It won't work as well unless it's mounted to a metal plate. So we've found a 12 inch by 12 inch galvanized steel plate on Amazon that would work perfectly for that purpose. And you can just VHB tape or die core that to the roof to use this antenna. We'll include a link to that plate as well as the aluminum that we used in our installation down below in the video description. Since we used the Trucker OTR antenna, we're going to keep the magnet mount so that we could use the WeBoost in the car if we decide to. Now that the roof antenna is installed, we're going to do the same kind of neat, clean installation of the candy bar. We're just showing a quick overview of this part of the job since every installation will be different. Since we'll be placing it on the dash, we'll need to run the cable down from the tech cabinet. That requires fishing the wire behind the dash and up the A-pillar to the overhead compartment. Since that's a pretty long distance, we're adding a 10-foot low-loss extension cord, which we also ordered from WeBoost. If you're wondering how we make informed decisions about staying connected on the road, we learned most of what we know from our friends Chris and Cherie of RV Mobile Internet. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest mobile technology, we highly recommend subscribing at rvmobileinternet.com. Now our candy bar is velcroed to the dash, well over eight feet from the rooftop antenna. All that's left is to attach each antenna cable to the correct jack on the WeBoost unit. Plug in the power cord and place it in the desired spot. We've already added a couple of strips of industrial strength Velcro on the back and we're putting ours on the ceiling. When we switch on the power, the light comes on. And within about two seconds, our phone shows a dramatic increase in signal. By design, the interior antenna is low power to prevent oscillation, so it only provides signal up to a few feet away. But the strongest boost comes from placing the phone or MiFi device right on top of it. Our WeBoost is now the latest addition to our RV technology arsenal. Another way that your installation may differ from ours is if you decide to use 12 volt power instead of 110. The kit includes this 12 volt adapter, which plugs into a cigarette lighter. But in our installation, we have better access to 110 volt power in our tech cabinet. Plus, since our residential refrigerator requires power all the time, our inverter's on anyway. So we ordered the optional 110 volt adapter for our installation. Even though we've only just installed our WeBoost, our initial impression is really good. We're in a spot right now where we are on the edge of cell phone service, but as soon as we turned the system on, we locked onto rock solid signal and performance went through the roof. We're going to continue testing the system as we travel and we'll be sure to keep you updated. Thanks for watching.